Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another episode of checking out one of your guys' solar systems. So today we've got one system to do from the user ErrorXD in Discord so a massive thank you to them for sending uh, their system in and yeah if you'd like to send in your own systems for this series as well make sure to join my Discord server link in the description and then upload it to um, the upload chat and then I can get round to do it um, once I'm through the queue as um, yeah, I'm making good progress on the queue at the moment so yeah, I'm slowly uh, working through it so um yeah, without further ado, let's get into this. So, yeah, the system today is called the NUS, uh, the NUS system here. And I believe it's a brand of wolf system, so this should be pretty cool. Okay, here we go. Right. Interesting stuff indeedy. So, here we go. Right. Ah, Nuskiski. Ah, that's a good old uh, common name we used to get. Okay, so the NUS system. The first planet in the system is uh, NIS. Okay, so yeah, let's go on to the star before we get on to that. So here it is, Nuss itself. So it's a brown dwarf, as we can see, all the stats on it. Um, yeah, brown dwarf-like object there. Right, onto the yeah, the first planet here. So the first planet in the system is Nis. It used to be a Jupiter-sized object, but has been torn apart slowly by Nuss. The heat generated actually expands the lifetime of such star, and is believed that it will collide with its parent star in a million years or two. So that could eventually collide with the brown dwarf itself here. So we've got the hot, hot gas giant right here. Pretty cool. Well, maybe tidal heating warms it up as well. Who knows? Right, so next up we got uh, Nustas, a Mars-sized ferrier orbiting away from Nis. It has a weak magnetic field in thin argon atmosphere. Okay. Hey, I'm liking this already. Right, um, let's quickly just go um, blah, blah, studio. Okay, so there's a better look at it. Uh, I guess directional light. That works. So here it is. So studio, uh, directional light mode. There it is there. Looks cool. Looks like an IO texture, but uh, coloured. So, yeah, I'm really, really liking the way that looks. Uh, magnetic field. We can have a little peek at that as well. So, uh, it's on co is it on composition or surf? And no, it is composition. So, there you go. There's its magnetic field. Okay. Right. And now, moving on, we have got... So, we have Nostas. Now, we've got uh, Nuskaski. Okay. Here. So, this is one of the good old random generated names. So, here it is. Right. Uh... A habitable world with ultraviolet vegetation and brown fruits. These plants reflect ultraviolet because it's the most uh, abundant light. It is very Earth-like and extremely diverse creatures. Okay, so there we go. We can see it's quite ocean-heavy as well. If we look on the stats, it's got 99 and 88. So yeah, very, very high stats. It's probably based off an Earth originally as well. But yeah, there it is. Very nice stuff indeed on that one. Okie dokie. Right next up, we've got Novice. Uh, I think that is the yellow one here. Yep. Um, a recently formed world around the size of Mars. It has a chlorine atmosphere, making it one of the most toxic planets. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's a bright yellow atmosphere on it, a very dark and sort of black-coloured surface underneath it as well there. Looking good. Okay, right. Next up, we've got uh, Calidum. So that is this dark purple one over here. A Venus-sized world that was recently hit by a hit with a grazing shot by a small dwarf planet it has a ring of debris around it and a small proto moon forming in there expected to reach a size of 230 kilometers okay cool all right and then on to the uh you can see there's a little ring if you look carefully you can see the little it's very it's just tiny little particles there and yeah here is the moon itself all in here so that's gonna uh, grow up in material there pretty cool stuff you can see the parent star over there parent brown dwarf looking good right next up we have got uh Kalium. So that is over here. Alrighty, good stuff indeed. Right. So there's this one. Oh, this one looks cool. A Venus sized world that has recently hit. Oh, no, 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 no. We've got. Yeah, they're quite confusing names, right? A cold desert planet with a breathable atmosphere. It has high amounts of atmospheric sulfur, uh, hexafluoride. Oh, yeah, I'm saying that right. Hexafluoride. So it's expected to become habitable within 50 to 350 years. In universe time, that's actually pretty fast. That's pretty, pretty uh, close. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff there. And then onto the moon. Uh, a moon, it is a world of a fluorine atmosphere. Fluorine's uh, pretty, pretty spooky. Uh, atmosphere and hydrogen fluoride lakes. Exotic biochemistry may be happening here. Ooh, I like it. Awesome. Right, now we are taking a jump by the looks of it. Yep, so we've got Procol over here. An ice giant with rings. It is Neptune-sized object that recently tore apart one of its, or all of its moons but one. Okay. So here it is. It's looking pretty nice as well. Nice uh, light blue, sort of uh, almost like a Uranus shade of colour on it there. Looking good. Then on to uh, its moon over here. So this is uh, Party Party Seps there. Uh, a moon of Procol, a small ice dwarf with a thick hydrogen, methane and other gases based atmosphere, which make it very blue and colourful, although it is far away from its star. All right. 
awesome stuff indeed there. Right now, uh, next jump out. Um, so where, where, where do we go next? Uh, the first object to test. Wait, so perhaps the moon is a small ice. Okay, so what's all these? Where, where are all those? Is there a second? Uh, Barry send. Ah, okay. Where's the second star? There's a Barry set. Why is there a Barry center? There has to be a second star. If there's a Barry center, because yeah, uh, we've done the, we've done the moons. The first object around Tuss. So we've done Nuss. Nuss is down here. So where is Tuss? <laughs> That's Nis, the second one. So where's Tuss? Let's just manually find it. Uh, I'm guessing it's this object over here. Where where's this object? I'm clicking it. Oh, where where are we going? Is it invisible? I'm trying to locate it. Oh, a day. Something's gone. Something's not right right here. There's like a. Uh, Tusnas. Is there a planet called Tusnas? Okay, so whereabouts is this? Right, here we go. Right. So, yeah, we are past the Barry Center. So, what's all the way down here then? I'm zooming in. I'm still zoom. Okay, right. So, here's the here's parent planet. Where'd that weird star go then? Uh, labels are on. You can't see them because their trails are blacked out. Uh, let's try a different colored background quickly just so we can locate. Ah, okay. Where is... So, Tuss is there. Right. Okay, so this is a brown dwarf as well. So, I don't know why the image was showing whatever that is up there. I thought it was that where we had to go. But no, this is this is the binary. The binary is with this object here. So, this is the second brown dwarf. Okay. Okay, now it makes sense. Awesome. Let's go back to just stars. Right. Back on track. So, the first object around Tuss is Tussness. A mini Neptune shrouded in cold darkness receiving very little light at all. So, that's the blue one here. Looking good. Right, the uh, second object is Tusk Nussi, a Neptune sized object which also barely gets any light or heat while in orbiting. Has a very big layer of hot ice around its core. So, is it this one here? This one? Uh, Tusk Nussi. Okay, so yeah, here we go. Okay, cool. So, that is it there. So, we've got a uh, blue and white colour scheme going on there. Pretty basic one. Right, now we're taking an even bigger hop. Yeah, we can't see anything. So, what we got next? So, next one is Salby. Okay. A once lush world with a highly um, highly elliptical orbit that now has solid uh, oxygen and nitrogen mountains along with cryovolcanoes. That kind of reminds me of the Mercury world I customised in one of the recent videos around uh, Stephenson uh, star. Um, it's geologically active, so it does have some subsurface oceans that reach about 9 kilometres deep. Very nice indeed. I like that. Right, it is said that Nuss and Tuss will eventually collide and form a red dwarf. That's pretty cool. Nuss Tuss, which will relatively... Oh, that's, that'd be the name if they both comply. So Nuss and Tuss will make Nuss Tuss, uh, which will um, heat up the planets of the system for trillions of years. So it'll be a red dwarf, yeah? I like that. That's a cool little um, cool little system there, the two uh, brown dwarfs that are destined to crash into each other and make a new red dwarf. I like that. That's a really, really cool cool idea. I'm liking it. So there's the full lineup of all the objects. So we have the original brown dwarf, Nuss. We've got the second one here, Tuss. So that's a little colder in temperature. Then onto the planets, we had like a Neptune blue world, we had a Uranus blue world, uh, and then like a whiter sort of world here, a blue on it. Then we had Nis, which was the planet really close to, uh, really close to Nuss. And then onto the rocky planets, we had all these guys here. There's that weird star. No idea what. Where, actually, where is this star at? See, I don't. Th oh, it's inside. It is inside. I'm guessing this object is to just provide a bit of light for some of the stuff. So if I click play it, it'd break it. Um, but yeah, I'm guessing this object, all it's meant to do is um, provide light, a very little amount of light. I'm guessing that's, yeah, the purpose of it. So, yeah, onto the rest of the objects. So, all the other objects down here. I really like the yellow one there. That one is cool. And I did like this one as well, Nustas, one of the first objects we saw. And, yeah, definitely the volcanic um, light world there too. And the uh, mar the desert world, uh, this one here, the cold desert. I really, really like those worlds. They're my, definitely my highlights. But I think for the purpose of science, we are going to have to blow up. Or click play and see what happens. So let's close all that. Click play. Play. Yeah. So this object consumed that little one inside it, didn't it? So it's disappeared now. Or has it? Oh, it's still in there. What's going on here then? <laughs> oh, who knows? That is that is strange. But yeah, that star did some stuff. But yeah, it all runs pretty cool. Look at that. Very nice indeed. So we can actually just watch the system uh, work out. So that's how it works. Look how all the orbits move. Look at that. That's cool, isn't it? Hey. All the objects crossing. We've got a retrograde orbit object in there as well. Yeah, they're all, that's going good. Look at that. 
very nice. So yeah, there we go. That does it for the uh, the, was it the NUS system, or probably soon to be the NUS TUS system. So yeah, that does it for this system, guys. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. Let's even go for 30 likes on today's video. Also, subscribe for more. Helps on the journey to 19,000 subscribers. And again, a massive thank you to ErrorXD for sending in his uh, system. And yeah, if you'd like to send in your own systems, like I said at the start of the video, make sure to join my Discord server. Link in the description. And you simply just drag and drop your systems into the upload chat. But with all that said and done, guys, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.